Have you ever done something where you felt really overwhelmed all of a sudden? Like, say you're learning something new, like you are trying out go-karts for the very first time, or you're first learning how to surf, or maybe you're trying a brand new dance, whatever the case may be. There's this idea that I wanna share with you guys in this video that is around why we feel overwhelmed when we're trying something new or when we're in the process of learning something new and how the art of practice helps us overcome this feeling of overwhelm with attention. But first, let me tell you a little bit of a background story about how I got this idea. So I used to love motorbikes. Ever since I was 17, literally like the moment that I could get it, I got my motorbike license, I got my first motorbike, and then I spent the next 10 years after that really enjoying motorbike riding and devoting myself to becoming a, a better, faster, and safer motorbike rider. I used to attend these classes called Superbike School, where they dissect the specific skills needed to be able to ride a motorbike quickly on the track. I'd also go to track days a whole bunch of times throughout the year. I would you know, read books on techniques on how to ride quickly and how to ride more efficiently. I would study the greats on MotoGP, all of this stuff in order to become a better rider. One of these books that I read on motorbike riding contained a concept that has stuck with me even till this day. I've never forgotten it since my teenage years. This was a book on writing techniques. It was called A Twist of the Wrist by Keith Code. Now, the skill of riding a motorbike quickly on a racetrack is not an easy skill. When you're going on a straightaway at 255 kilometers an hour into a 200 kilometer sweeping left-hand turn, the entire world whizzes past you in fractions of a second. And if you don't have the attention, if you don't have the focus, if you're not in the zone to make sure that things like your body position is correct, your turn in speed is really quick, your entry speed is really quick, your head position is in the right spot and a hundred other different things, that can mean the difference between exiting the corner successfully or ending up in a high side and potentially hurting yourself and tumbling you know, 20, 30, 40 meters into the sides of the track. And it's this idea of attention and being in the zone that Keith Code writes about. Specifically, he gives a analogy called the Tendal Rule, which is what I wanna talk about in this video today. It's an analogy about how as humans, we only have a finite amount of attention. And let's say that this span of attention costs $10. Every single thing that we focus on while we're doing our craft, while we're practicing our skills has a cost. And when there are more things that cost more than the amount of our total attention, when there's so many things rushing at us that we can't possibly afford, that's when we get overwhelmed. To keep the racing analogy going, if we spend say $5, so 50% of our total attention span, say we spend it on the entry speed that we are going to enter this corner at, that means we only have another $5 to spend on other things. So let's say we spend another $3 worth of attention on body positioning, and we spend another $2 worth of attention on head positioning. Then we're at $10, we're at max concentration, right? Max focus, and we're entering this corner, great. But let's say mid corner, while we're making this corner, another rider decides to pass us, right? This other rider, this new thing demands our attention. This new situation demands our attention, but we're already at full capacity for what you know, we're able to focus on at any given time. So what happens? Well. One of two things. The first thing is that we potentially overspend on our attention and we make mistakes. The second thing that could happen is we reshuffle that attention elsewhere. So if that new input requires $2 worth of attention, then we might deduct $2 worth of attention from something foundational, let's say, you know, our entry speed or whatever that might be. Now, this ebbing and flowing and changing and movement of attention is something that I wanna focus on in this video because 
It happens when we practice anything, really, when we are in the process of trying to improve on any craft. And of course, the same is true with photography as well. Your attention matters. When you're doing street photography, the seconds in between a person's walking gait can mean the difference between a throwaway image or a keeper. You know, when you're doing, say, landscape photography and you're doing a sunrise shoot, the difference of five minutes can be the difference between a photo that remains in your archives for the remainder of time, or it could be your next portfolio shot. Or if you're doing a portrait shoot, the micro expressions on a face can occur in literal split seconds only to never then be seen again. If you're doing street photography and you have $10 worth of attention to spend and you see this fantastic composition you wanna take a photo of, right? And you spend $8 worth of attention, so 80% of your attention, picking up your camera, fiddling around with the settings and making sure the shutter speed is okay, the aperture is right, the ISO is correct, raising your camera then to your eye, that remaining $2 worth of attention might not be enough to make you realize that the thing that you wanna take a photo of has now left because you were spending way too much time on your settings. And this happens so, so much when you are first starting photography, you find out that you miss so many potential shots that you want to take because you're spending your attention and time doing something else. You'll also find that you know, you'll go through your post-production process and realize that you shot particular shots with particular settings and realize, ah, oh, I should have shot it with this shutter speed or I should have shot it at this aperture or I should have done this technique. Or you know, if you're shooting with your friends, and you go to the same spot to shoot the same thing and you review your images and you're like, ah, oh, my friend shot way more different compositions than I did because I was way too focused on this one particular baseline composition. This happens all the time. And of course, the answer to all of this is practice. And if you're anything like me, someone who loves to be efficient in anything that they do, but especially in the art of learning how to learn, you'll know that practice and repetition is the key to getting you know, better results, but you'll also question why. And the answer to that is that the actions that we take, the things that we focus on cost us attention. And the practice and the repetition of these things, these things that we're focusing on, the practice of them discounts their value. It costs us less over time in terms of attention to spend on them, thus leaving us a little bit more latitude to have more attention to spend on other things that might improve our compositions even more. So over time, rather than it costing us $8 worth of attention every single time we want to take a photo, we might be able to practice and keep getting better at this act. And eventually it might only cost us $2. And we might get to the point where we're so fast, where we can just flick dials without even looking at our camera, raise it to our eye, take the photo, where we're so efficient at that, that we have you know, $8 of attention left to spend on other things that might improve our compositions, things like vision, things like movement and moving around, things like experimentation. One of the great things about photography visual patterns, which by the way, if you don't know already, I'm doing a series right now on visual language and visual patterns. Check out the link in the description below if you wanna get on that. But the great thing about teaching these visual patterns is that through this repetitive use, through this repetitive practice and exposure to knowing these patterns and using them all the time, after repeated use, they become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to use in your photography. They cost you less attention to see and therefore to use in your photography, which means that you can start getting to the point where you are so quick with them, where the recall is so fast that you're not even thinking about consciously doing it, where it doesn't even cost you anything. That's when it gets really interesting because you can start to combine patterns together and your overall average standard of how good your images are goes up and up and up and up. And this is the crux of practice. This is the core of what practice is. It is so that these things can become, these, these pieces can become really cheap for us to focus on. And that gives us more latitude to be able to spend our attention on other things that enable us to create better compositions. 
So yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanted to share this little analogy on the $10 rule and your attention because I've been using it since I was a teenager. And for me personally, it's been more beneficial to my life than I actually give it credit for, not only in photography, but for any other skill that I'm trying to learn as well. So I hope you found it useful as well. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.